this LGBT community and how they use the Bible and God as a template mm. to justify their behavior. Why? 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 Or more symbolic, they use the rainbow as their flag. But that's a whole different subject. My thing is, their community is so bent on them supporting us, it's like they don't have a support system of their own. Now, you mean us, I'm not talking about Christians, I'm talking about heterosexuals. Because if you notice, every time they need something, who they come to? The heterosexuals. Mm-hmm. When they need to adopt a child, who they come to? Heterosexual. When they need a surrogate, who they, who they come to? Heterosexual. Straight folk. Why? You have, you have to find yourself a community, right? And if a community, and within the community, you can be people in the community to take care of themselves. Like what's wrong with what's wrong with you alone, um, woman? You scared of a man getting into you? Don't so you like woman? You scared of a man getting into you? To so make you pregnant and all that stuff, fellas? So, are you scared of getting with a woman? Don't so you mess with a man, you scared of getting into a woman? That's your nature. You was built for that. You was you basically been programmed to do that. What why 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 one go against the grain but at the same time stick with the pro, stick with the status pro? And what I mean by that, I mean you you won't you want to say that God made you gay. And you have the right to believe that. You have the right to believe that that don't automatically mean it's right. But you have that right to believe that. But you want the same benefit as a straight couple, a straight marriage per couple. You want the same right as a straight family, but yet you a community. So why get rid of my right? Why attack my right? For one, dis- disagree with what you believe. Two, want to live a life that benefit that will benefit my family. And two, want to stick to the original program when when God created. You chose to go the route that you want to go. That's cool. But don't stop people like me for one disagreeing. But let's face it, we disagree. It's not that I'm going out saying you're going to hell. You already heard it. But my thing is this, while we on this earth, until that day come where you where God chooses where you go to live eternally, while we on this earth, while we in America, Respect my respect my opinion just as much as you want me to tolerate your lifestyle. Okay, cool. But don't expect me to be like, hey, cool, you gay? All right, cool. I forget the fact that I'm a Christian. No. You want my respect? You gotta give it to me the same way you want it. Otherwise, you just basically just say tolerance, tolerance should be a one-way thing. And if that's the case, it's going to be a problem between straight who disagree and the gays who just don't care. And that's what basically what's going on. The gays basically don't. Let's put one shout out to our boy Mike Sam. Who's doing it real big in St. Louis. He's doing it so big that before he even put put, put the dog on jersey on, he get ESPN highlights in his room. Doing it big. Get the phone call from the round people himself. Then all of a sudden, get one to his love. Mwah. And that's a dude in ESPN. Thinking that ain't gonna cause no controversy, it did. Then all of a sudden, not only did he get an opportunity to play for the Rams, he gets Oprah to hook him up with a documentary series. From his journey, all from playing football to being in the league at the very first openly gay openly gay that means he's the first to came out the, came out came out the door saying hey I'm gay 
So Mike Sam, I hope you, you I mean, I know you did it big in Mizzou, but if you want, but this is the time when you need to be doing it big in the Rams. And I'm not saying that because the Rams been slacking off, because I'm saying, I'm saying. <laughs> they, need, they need all the help they can get, Mike, so you get out there. <laughs> yes. But the thing of it is with Mike now, it's more than just him being trying to be be acknowledged as just a football player now. You just basically let everybody know what your lifestyle is. Instead of letting it be let it speak for itself on the field. Which I can't I don't understand. You gay? That's your business. You disagree though, but that's your business. But what you get on that doing that field is what people are going to expect you to do on that field. Same thing goes with Jason Collins on the basketball court. Why y'all put him on that court? <laughs> they do get 11 minutes on the floor and barely get points, barely get rebounds, barely get assists. But yet we want to y'all want to celebrate this dude for coming out saying he's gay. And if that's the case. Sports ain't never gonna be the same. Basically, same thing with Tim Tebow. He came out saying he was a uh, sanctified Christian. Y'all crucified him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And especially when he helped put the Broncos back on the map. Mm -hmm. You serious? Mm -hmm. But yeah, as soon as somebody like Mike Sam and Jason Collins come out and say, hey, I'm gay, y'all buy their jersey. Make them the number one selling jerseys. Can I say something about Tim Tebow? Go ahead. First of all, Tim Tebow came from. Let's just get that out the way. I so agree. Never I agree. Good, okay. Let's get that out the way. Okay. Number two, <laughs> I do agree that um, he did crucify for being a Christian, but he did admit that he was an evangelist type Christian. So of course he's gonna be real broad and open about it. So I think. He should expect that kind of backlash if you're going to be that bold with it. Not saying that it was deserving, but, you know, that, that comes with the territory. Uh -huh. As far as Jason Collins, Jason Collins can't play. <laughs> so, and, but I do agree with y'all about uh, how they want to promote it like it's a big thing. And But, you know, this dude ain't really doing nothing as a basketball player for real. Like I always say, it ain't going to really mean nothing for real until a elite player comes out the closet. It's one thing to have Michael Sounds come out the closet. Let Peyton Manning come out the closet. Okay, then it's told, then the game is different. Okay, <laughs> right. we're not just talking about a football player. We talk about a future Hall of Fame. We talk about, you know, one Super Bowl. We'll, right. You know, not our stakes. Okay, you know uh -huh. what I mean? It's like that. So, the thing with Mike, what I feel about Michael Sounds is, I, the, the Oprah documentary did shock me. The kiss didn't shock me. The whole press conference, all oh, that didn't shock me. I'm waiting for when this, if he wilds out on the field and he actually does good and at least gets rookie of the year. I want to see how they gonna handle that. Cause this, cause like I said, if he do bad, he just gonna be washed up. He just gonna get lost in the wind. Oh yeah. You know, <laughs> I think I bet you. I bet you. Not, not, not according to this agenda. I don't know, dude. <laughs> if he, if he has that, if he played like Jason Collins, because you gotta think about it, he, he a defensive end. He already got two spots in front of him, and he a rookie, so he gotta work his way up, bro. And you looked at as a sweet boy on the team. You know he finna drill him at a uh, OTC. Yeah, or whatever it's called, I don't play sports. But, <laughs> but you know they finna, you know they finna get in his head. And he, and like I said, he's already on third strength. But, so if he don't do good this year, ain't gonna do nothing, it's gonna, it ain't gonna really Third strength? Oh, yeah, they he, gonna, boy, they gonna pro protest yeah. that. I mean, they'll probably, bro, they'll, but, but you gotta say, he'll get playing time pre-game, mm -hmm. cause they always give it to that, but, at the end of the day, they gonna let him be known, yo, this football, we are a billion dollar business. We don't care about your rights. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we a billion dollar business. And that's, <laughs> and that's what it's supposed to be. Like, it's like, for real, for real, if you playing any sports, it don't matter what lifestyle you have. Yeah. 
It's like what you do on that field is what people gonna acknowledge you with what you do on that field. Right. So it don't <laughs> so Mike Slim, it really don't matter how many times you kiss your boyfriend in the camera, how many times you take pictures with the dude, or even or even you can even go marry the dude in the mayor's office yourself. <laughs> what you do on that field is what gonna what gonna matter. And well, like I said, if he is elite, even if he all he gotta do is be elite one game. Now you know the first tackle you gonna get, they gonna make a big deal about. You know, oh yeah, first game you're gonna play gonna make a big deal. But I'm talking about if he is elite in a very key game, he'll get that respect. I feel he'll get that respect. But the problem is, it's the media. The media is gonna is what's gonna abuse it, and it's gonna make it real hard to respect him because you gonna because you may see like, oh he elite, but the media keep putting him in on TV. You gonna think, oh, he he showing off now, right. and it may not necessarily be him. It may be the media. You know what I mean? But I can't lie. When I heard he took that deal with Oprah before and didn't let the Rams know, it's kind of like, oh, ah, yeah, you had that money too. Right. <laughs> like you want that money too. You know what I mean? So I think he's aware that he you know he gonna get paid off of this. I'm just hoping though that you better bring it on that field, bro, because. If he is elite and he do his job, all you gotta do is be do his job one game, one and, game. I, and I promise you, they'll they'll give him more respect. But he got a long way to come. Like I said, he third string and the defensive end. They already got two good defensive ends, mm. so he got to work hard. <laughs> <laughs> but at the end of the day, man, what you doing that field matters. Mm. That, that's all right, man. Let's get this straight. Mm. If y'all wanna call it the city out of community. Go for it. Just don't get at us to either. Don't get at us for not 100% backing it up, supporting y'all. Because we disagree. Only because we disagree. And that's it. It doesn't mean we're bashing. And, we, and if those that are bashing, you know what I mean? We will be them. But at the same time, if we just disagree, that's it. It's not. It's not discriminating. It's not bashing. It's not even really hating. It's just that we disagree. Mm-hmm. If you want to do, if dudes, if you want to mess with another dude, that's your, you have a right to do that. But it's not right. Women, same thing. You want to mess with another woman, that's your right. But at the same time, it's not right. But at the same time, if you want to, if you, you should not be getting, trying to get the same benefit as the straight folks get, but yet consider yourself a mi- uh, community. Or trying to get our kids, but yet consider yourself a community. Because one thing I know is that community means that the group of people in the midst, the group of people in the midst of each other trying to help each other out. Now you're doing a good job as far as these pride best parades. But if y'all trying to do something big, do it big within yourself. It's like, don't try to take away our rights and make sure that we learn something from your perspective and consider us ignorant because we disagree. Like, we can't at all. Like, y'all still trying y'all hardest to make it seem like y'all born to be gay. And there's not many scientists to support that. Matter of fact, the Bible don't even support that. So what makes you think science is going to support that? It, as much as they trying, they're not going to support that. But at the same time, y'all have y'all have y'all thing. Do what y'all please. Do what y'all want to do. But don't get at us because we disagree. And at the same time, don't misquote scriptures. And and, and don't even dare buy that whole Queen's James version. Cause it ain't doing y'all no justice. There's a Queen James. Yes. Well, I don't know where he's up. I just on Facebook I saw a picture of a white Bible with rainbow colors on it. Yeah, and they call it the Queen James version. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is diabolically creative. I gotta get on that. <laughs> that is diabolical, but that is very creative. <laughs> so it's basically trying to flip the word right. of God. Queen I mean, it, I'm, I'm, cause that sounds like a drag name. <laughs> yeah, because that's the thing, though. It's bad enough. It's bad enough. There's a gay church. That's bad enough. We got gay priests and gay bishops. Bad enough. We got transsexuals, priests, and bishops. 
Yeah. There's a gay Burger King too. There's a gay Burger King. You see that commercial? Oh yeah. I'm telling you, man. Case has been off. <laughs> I'm telling you, the community is, is literally getting big, man. It's, it's literally getting big. What's my saying, Pierre? Yeah, he pays. <laughs> yeah, he pays right now. <laughs> right. You, you don't believe there's a homosexual agenda now? Hey, I don't know what to say to y'all, but like, seriously. Right. Just think about it. Yeah, I'm just thinking that it exists that after Mecklenburg did his Grammy event. No. It's way, it's way, it's way older than that. Like, that's just the tip of the iceberg lifestyle when the rainbow is a covenant sign mm -hmm. between man and God but yet you want to take it as a sign of abomination like God did not create the rainbow for you to mess it up just like God did not create a sex for us to mess it up yet we mess it up anyway but here's the thing if you ever want to call yourself a community? Call yourself a community. But do what people in communities do, which is take care of themselves. I mean, if the president want to do whatever it takes to make sure y'all get noticed, then they got to have mercy on their soul. Because there's going to be a whole lot of work to be done, especially when he's done with the term. But at the same time, this is still America. Don't get at me or people like me because one, we disagree, two, it's really is an abomination according to the Bible, in which you misquote lots of lots of it. And then add add scriptures that don't really don't be there. Like, you're mad because we mad because we let you know that it's not right in God's sight, in God's sight, but yet you want to come at us and say, Thou should not judge as if that's even a commandment. Y'all want to get at us and talk about throw, he who without seeing cast the first stone. Do y'all understand why they, why Jesus said that? Do y'all do y'all really read y'all Bible well enough to know why y'all will quote these scriptures? First of all, thou should not judge. It's not even a scripture or a commandment. Mm. However, Jesus said, judge not unless you be judged. As far as I'm concerned, y'all judge us more than we judge y'all. But y'all don't want to be judged. Ain't that a trip? <laughs> y'all don't want to be judged, but yet y'all judge us. That's something to think about. And then, he who without sin cast the first stone. Don't y'all realize that at that time, folks was about to stone a woman who was caught in the act of adultery and then try to use the law of Moses to justify their action to stone them. But according to the law of Moses, a man that's been caught in adultery with the woman, both the man and that woman get stoned. But instead, they find this young lady in the act of adultery. Chances are she was a prostitute and they set her up. And that's just me saying that. Or they have found her in the act of adultery and they let the dude and they let the dude run away. And then they try to bring it to Jesus to set him up. And when Jesus realized that he was, he was trying to set him up, he rolled on the ground, got up and said, hey, he who without sin, cast the first stone. And then went back to writing. And then from the youngest to the oldest, everybody dropped their stone, dropped their stones and left. That's the reason we Jesus quoted that scripture in the first place. But yet y'all want to use those scriptures to justify your actions. There's no condemnation. Of course, there's no condemnation in those who are in Christ. But at the same time, don't get it twisted. It's not about us. We're not trying to condemn y'all. Your sins condemn you, condemn you on your own. We that trying, we that trying to preach the gospel, we're just trying to let you know, hey, Jesus didn't die for you to stay in your sin. He died for your sin so that you can be free. So he basically, he switched position. He took your place. He took my place. He took his place. He took everybody's place and took and took all of our sins and put it on that cross. Mm -hmm. And then he rose again. 